everybody to this week's edition of Military Trailblazer Office Hours. Uh, I'm your host for tonight. My name is Elio Kame. I am a director of customer success at Salesforce uh, and a military trailblazer. I serve in the United States Marine Corps. Uh, each week, David invites folks from throughout the ecosystem to share their experiences, their expertise, and their unique perspectives. The focus for tonight's session is exploring the business analyst, what we also call solution architect, career path. Let me just introduce you. Our co-host who you see here is Enrique Gomez from Salesforce. If you don't mind just introducing yourself, kind of walking us through your slide here. Sure. Hey, everyone. Uh, Enrique Gomez. I've uh, been at Salesforce for about uh, eight years. I've been uh, a solution architect for all of those years. My background was in, in call center as well as in training. Uh, we called it client education. So we would go out and we would train and offer best practices uh, for our customers on our, uh, it, it was called, uh, at the time, it was called Cash for Online. Um, and again, I used to also uh, manage uh, a call center. So at the time when I joined Salesforce uh, eight years ago, uh, or prior to that, uh, Salesforce was looking for uh, folks that, on that knew or had industry knowledge um, re regarding uh, call centers. So that's how I came in. And from there on out, um, Salesforce at the time really needed someone to to be a solution architect, a, a business analyst uh, for them. So they taught me the ins and outs. And from there on, I, I, uh, I uh, again, started uh, taking on projects. I was one of the first uh, uh, solution architects to uh, to implement a partner community. For those of you that know what a partner community is, now we call them Experience Cloud. So I was maybe like the third person in all of Salesforce that implemented an out of the box uh, solution for uh, for a pharmaceutical company and again for for Salesforce, right? So. Uh, I've done large, uh, complex projects. I'm actually in one right now. It uh, will be my one-year anniversary working for that uh, customer. Uh, they're a real estate customer. Um, they rent out offices. They've been in the news lately, but I unfortunately can't give their name. But again, if uh, you know who I'm talking about, don't yell it out. Um, <laughs> but that's what I've been uh, working for for the past year. And I had the pleasure of working with Elio uh, on this project, he made a cameo appearance to talk about our knowledge management. Um, yes, Phil, the, the recording is on. So um, again, I, I've worked, uh, I would say about 20 projects in the past eight years already for Salesforce. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's all based, right, um, on where you're needed here within Salesforce for which uh, projects. So it's not like we can pick, right, which projects, but I'll, I'll be talking about that later on, because you do really want to think of what industry you want to, uh, uh, you know, get, uh, become an expert on, excel on, think about that uh, as you're starting, if, if you're planning to go into a solution architect, think of what industry you want to be an expert on, is it telecommunications, right, is it a manufacturing, is it retail, so think of what expertise you would like to go into and become an expert in that. So, uh, but as you can see from my experience um, in the previous slide, I've done media, telecommunications, financial services, manufacturing. Um, and again, all of that within the past year, past eight years uh, has made me a, a really round individual, right? But pri prior to joining again, um, I, I really had no clue about Salesforce. Um, I just knew it was, uh, they were looking for call center expertise and how of a really nice platform it was. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my God, it's a lot better than Siebel. That's what we're using. And we're using homegrown, a uh, homegrown uh, case management system. So when I saw that, I'm like, I'm all for joining Salesforce. I really want to, uh, you know, be a business analyst here. And um, that's how I, I got into this. Uh, my uh, collegiate background, I actually went into administration of justice, a college degree out of Southern Illinois University. 
graduated in 99. So I just aged myself there. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, I went into call center cause I just, I needed a job, right? We all need a job when come out of college or as many of you, you know, coming out of the service, um, you know, you jump into a job and, uh, I was fortunate to go into a call center, which brought me into Salesforce. So, Fantastic. Thank you again, Enrique, for thank you very much for volunteering to help us out here and co-host today. Uh, so just for um, continuity's sake, uh, for those of you who are joining here for the first time, um, we just want to give you a brief explanation of what the purpose of these office hours are for. Right. So before we open the floor to questions and discussions, uh, these sessions are an informal get together. Right. Uh, uh, to, for gathering with military and trailblazers and our allies. Um, like I mentioned, uh, you know, Enrique didn't serve, but he is an employee of Salesforce and he has a unique uh, set of expertise and background that we'd love to share with you. Um, so that's, that's the goal here really is to make it a non-technical for us to explore Salesforce careers, you know, branding related uh, topics, meaning how do you brand yourself when you're trying to promote yourself and trying to enter into the ecosystem. Um, you know, how do you develop, you know, your career? How do you set your related career goals, et cetera? So keep that in mind that um, that's our goal for, for us to be collaborative here. Um, I will keep an eye out for the chat window uh, during tonight's session. If you have questions, you can, there's a little button down there. You can raise your hand. Um, we will be sharing things like uh, LinkedIn profiles or other areas of information throughout the session. The session is being recorded. David does have a YouTube channel, uh, and we will be posting that, uh, that, that link for that video if you kind of missed it today in that YouTube channel. Uh, uh, and again, this is all for us to kind of come together, you know, feel comfortable, ask questions, and so I'm going to jump in into um, kind of a storytelling with Enrique to, to get a little bit more on his take in, in his role. And, and, and again, kind of trying to get his perspective so you have an understanding of um, the ecosystem, right? Uh, because there's not just admins or technical roles. There are in-betweens, right? I'm not in sales. Enrique is not in sales. We do a lot of work in between, right? We understand business process, uh, solutioning, uh, uh, communicating with, you know, with our clients. And then also we have a side of technology that we know. Uh, Enrique, actually, I was looking at your background and uh, we actually started very similar. I started in a contact center world right out of college for a company called Ingram Micro. Uh, but like you, got early into Salesforce and just learn about this technology as my career progressed. So I, I can't wait to dive in and ask you more questions. Um, so with that perspective, uh, we'll jump in there again. This is, if you don't feel comfortable asking questions, you don't have to ask questions. If you want to post them in the chat, feel free to post them in the chat. Again, we'll monitor those areas. Um, and, and again, we'll continue the discussion. So, uh, could you give us a little bit more uh, understanding of what a solutions architect, what are the, 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 the details of that role? Now, I know we, you and I partner, I was pulling to uh, a request from our client, but you were already assigned to the client. So can you, can you give us a little bit more about your role? So uh, a solution architect is a, a, a business analyst, right? Um, so, Solution architect is responsible to gather requirements from your customer. And I think the most important thing of being a solution architect is to listen to your customer, um, gather the information from them. Here at Salesforce, we're giving a statement of work where they tell us you, you will implement these features of Salesforce. So as a solution architect, I'm responsible for the, uh, for the solution um, along with the makeup of the team. So normally with a, with a, with a solution architect and the makeup of a, a development team, you have a technical architect. The technical architect is responsible for the integration design. So if one system is going to talk to Salesforce, the technical architect is really the person focusing on that. And you as a, 
as a solution architect, you need to understand what those requirements are, right? What is this uh, system going to do to talk to Salesforce or what is Salesforce going to do to talk to this uh, integration? So really quick, the makeup of a team, normally you have your, again, your technical architect, you have your solution architect. Uh, our solution architects, for the most part, the majority, I would say about 98% of them are functional architects, meaning they do uh, non-integration work. So think of it creating a field, creating you know a, a flow within Salesforce, uh, creating a page layout to show what fields can appear within the UI. So again, not custom code or, you know, for some of you that are already knowledgeable in, in some of the language like Apex code or lighting web components. So those are all, again, technical components. Uh, for those of you that have already started your, your Salesforce journey, you know what they are, right? But for those of you that have not, those are more for like developer, the, 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 the techies, if you want to call them that, that will go in and do that. Salesforce is set up where you can do click and point for the most part. Again, adding a field uh, to a specific object, adding a page layout. All of that are, are, uh, is what we call functional, right? It's the point and click that you, anyone can do um, as a basic admin administrator within Salesforce. Got so it. for the yeah for the solution architect role again business analyst um, it does, uh, a project does have uh, various faces in it so my favorite is the the plan and design that's where you go in gather requirements we call them user stories um, and user stories is just an agile way of of gathering the requirements and then you fill out what needs to be built for that certain piece of functionality within Salesforce. So a solution architect is responsible for that. And we work closely with the customer. We normally call them product owners. So the product owner is someone at, at the customer who is also responsible for the solution that they want built within Salesforce. So when, when, you, when you hear business analyst, solution architect, think of them in the same um, in, in, in the same definition, if you want to call it that. Um, it's the same thing. We gather requirements from the customer. And again, in the plan and design phase, we go through workshops. That's where we sit with the customer, um, gather their requirements, hear what they want to do. And, and the reason I like that phase is that you get to learn what the, this customer is doing. As, and as a solution architect, you look at what Salesforce can do for them as you're gathering this information. Like, okay, you're creating an opportunity in this fashion in this old uh, old system, uh, green system, or this very antiquated system. And Salesforce, uh, like me and Leo were just talking about earlier, it's a Ferrari, right? Compared to some of these older systems. So that's where you, as a solution architect, you come in with best practices. And a lot of the best practices come from uh, being hands-on, right? Knowing the knowing the system, learning the system. And that's how I learned. A lot of hands-on, knowing how the system works, being up to date on the new functionality. We have three releases a year. It is a lot uh, to, to, uh, to take in. But again, the more information you know, the better you are uh, in delivering the right product for your customer. And again, key thing is within Solution Architect, listen to your customer's requirements. Try not to solution, but always keep that solution in your mind as you're going through your requirements gathering with the customer. So how would you recommend who's somebody who's interested in this role? Uh, how would they get started? I know, I know you mentioned, uh, I know you mentioned requirements gathering, obviously knowing the product. If I were new and I said, hey, Enrique, could you share with us what would be a good starting point if I wanted to become a business analyst? Yeah, I mean, the, the first starting point, you know, go through your certifications, right? Um, um, Salesforce offers uh, developer orgs out there that are free. Um, you can go in, you can request it from Salesforce and you can make it your own personal one. I know David Nava, for example, that's what he did. And um, I've known David now for about a year and a half and he ended up doing that and he created his own Salesforce org. Um, and 
he, he captures a lot of things there. <laughs> um, anywhere from, you know, like his exercise and captures a lot of tasks and he learned the system by hands on. That's one way of doing it. Another way, there's companies out there that are volunteers. Yeah, we have nonprofits. So nonprofits, there you go. Thank you. Right. So it sounds like a lot of obviously hands on the platform, but could you give us also um what would be a critical soft skill that somebody that wants to be effective in this role could develop? Like outside of the certifications that you see in that role, um, that the team here can probably learn from. Uh, soft skills, well, soft skills, I think, um, in order to get into a position like a solution architect, you know, and I, and I think everyone in this group, it's uh, being a leader, right? Um, leadership, communication skills, right? Um, I think we all have it. Uh, we just have to practice it. Teamwork, I think everyone in this group uh, right. has that ability. And I, I think those are really key for, for soft skills, uh, being detail-oriented being able to document, being able to, uh, again, you know, communicate with, uh, with the customer. I think those are the soft skills that are very important for, uh, for a solution architect. So, uh, folks, if you've, you know, for those of us that served, um, I'm also a Marine Corps veteran, and a lot of what we do in the service you'd be surprised how well it translates into the, into the private sector, specifically in tech. Uh, follow through, documentation. You know, uh, some of us sometimes have opportunities to do presentations to leadership, right? The, the XO, the CEO, for those of you that are uh, military spouses, you know uh, there's a lot of those programs or jobs that you have within the base. Um, so there's a lot of sounds to me from a business analyst, a lot of those skills that relate directly into this type of role where you have to truly listen to what the client is trying to build in their solution and uh, obviously document that, have what we call active listening, right? To make sure that not only do we understand the technology, but we're also able to translate what they're asking into a document, right? Uh, Enrique, I believe you have a lot of that documentation that's very critical. Your, your stories, maybe you can give us a, a, an example of what a, what a story is all about. How do you put those com a component of a story together? Right, so we you have to, for a story and for uh, gathering requirements, and I think you hit it spot on. Um, it's about, you know, understanding the business need, not only the technology need, right? What are their pain points? What are they trying to accomplish? Um, are questions you always want to keep in your mind when I mean, the customer will come and they will give you the pain points, but sometimes you have to like bring it out, bring it out in the open. Uh, and they're going to be stuck on technology. And sometimes you have to bring them back and say, it's not all about technology. What are your uh, what are your pain points? What are your key performance uh, indicators, right? And yeah. try to get that out of them. Now, for a user story, you have to understand who the actors are that we're building this for. They're the ones that you're, you'll have to also interact. And what I do a lot uh, for call centers, I like to sit down, of course, this pre-COVID, we <laughs> we're working remotely for the most part uh, after COVID. But I would go in and I would sit down and see day to day uh, what uh, these what these call center folks were doing. And you would do the same thing with the salesperson, right? Um, yeah. You would sit down, understand what their pain points are. I like looking to see, you know, who the newbie is, who the most uh, senior person is. Maybe they've been there 60 years and they're doing it one way um, to find out what, you know, this is the way it works and this is the way you should keep on going. And then you get the guy that hates the system and right. you, you try to get those uh, folks to, to bring that out. But going back, you have to find out who the personas are, who you're building this for. Once you have that and you go through your workshops, you get the requirements, then you put it into a user story. So to give you an example, a requirement um, that I have right now. So, um, as a salesperson, that's uh, as an inside salesperson, inside salespersons, again, are the ones that work on, on leads. Um, so the, 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 uh, it's a, a potential new member that comes in 
they look at that member, they see if it's a qualified league or if it's not qualified, meaning is it really, are they really going to become a member or not for us? Um, and then they want to see those transactions filtered through. Um, so I'll, I'll, my user story will start and we use uh, software uh, for mm -hmm. that. So we go in there and think of it like a ticketing system. It's not within Salesforce, it's separate. It's normally customer owned where we store all of our all of our requirements. Normally we have a big epic at the very top. It's based on functionality. So um, it's a big bucket of work. So let's think of uh, leads, right? The example I just gave you. So I would create a big epic, call it lead management. Right below that, I would then create each individual requirement that's part of that that bucket of work, right? Yep. So uh, if I had like case management, um, if I had like uh, implementing chat, for example, chat bots, right? That might be a, a big epic, meaning the epic is the big chunk of work that needs to be completed in, in order for the whole functionality to work. So going back to my example with lead, I would find out who the actor is, put that, act, that, that persona, AKA actor in there, and then I would put in as part of the user story what they're trying to accomplish and what's the benefit of it, right? And right. again, we use agile method methodology. Agile methodology, for those of you that do not know, agile is like you work through an iterative process. It's not like, you know, we, we gather the, the requirements and then we build, we get feedback. If it, if it makes it, great. If it doesn't, then we create another story and we continue right working as opposed to waterfall which is x y and z requirements need to be done right now or by the end of the set, uh, by the end of the uh, the project all of all of this needs to look exactly like this exactly yeah. agile is not like that agile allows you to do uh, again iterate throughout the project and we use what we call minimum viable product and minimum viable product Again, not used all the time, depends again on the project that you're on. But we look at what is the necessary uh, requirements that need to get fulfilled for the project. So there's a lot, a lot of moving parts. We could probably talk about it for hours. <laughs> right. Uh, and but getting back to your user story, that's how I would frame it um, right. as a, a so and so for the benefit uh, or uh, I need to do this or I want the system to do that. And then for the b benefit so that I can work on qualified leads or non-qualified leads or whatever. Right, and, and to add to that, I'll share just a quick story of mine. Um, I, I did some business analyst work when I was a contractor a long time ago, when I wanted to find out what industries I liked. So for those of you that are transitioning and you're trying to figure out, hey, how do I, how do I get some, some of this experience that Enrique is talking about? Think of this, from a military perspective, you can do some recon, right? I, I, I'll refer to this actually in, in a not so fancy word, but working parties. And if you're in the service, you know, working parties aren't that glamorous, right? It's kind of you're, you're cleaning out an area, you're sweeping uh, the kitchen or something. In the tech world, business analysts, the good ones that I've learned some of these skills, what Enrique is talking about, you really want to sit down with these uh, business characters and just ask them, hey, what do you do for the day to day? When you create a sale, what does that look like? So you call your client, you document deal, and you'll hear these stories from people that are having a lot of challenges. Oh, I got to have Word open and Excel, then I log into Salesforce, there's all these different things. And these poor people, you realize, have a big challenge in front of them just to, just to get a sale started, right? And the more you learn about how different people work in an organization, the more you'll start to paint a clearer picture in your mind. Okay, if all of these folks that, you know, might have differentiation between years in the job, uh, different clients that they talk to, you still, you, you'll find now that the process is, begins to draw similarities, right? They connect with a client, they present a product, they try to get negotiations and eventually they close a the deal. Being a business analyst, in my view, is great in that you learn more about different parts of the company and other and different clients from just being a business analyst and being having that inquisitive mind. Hey, I want to know about X. At the end of the day, you're going to write a story. It's kind of like Enrique said, you know, you have a 
they identify the process, they do certain steps so the technical guys can go and architect the final solution. But it truly is uh, like a recon. You're going to learn from these different roles at a, at, a, you know, at a company. I started some of my roles um, in that type of perspective where you just learn about different ways people work in different departments from different clients. So Enrique, thank you for that description. And, and a question, you know, I get asked, what's the difference between a senior solution architect that you are, Enrique, and, and a, a regular solution architect? Um, one is you've demonstrated as a senior solution architect, you can take on complex projects. You can go ahead and, um, and you know, be a, solu a, a solution architect in a project where you have various work streams. And when we call it work streams, like Revenue Cloud, you have MuleSoft, um, so various themes, and you can show that you've been a leader doing those type of, of projects. And again, it all comes down to, like I said, leadership, knowing your customer. One important thing is getting feedback, right? Always get that feedback from your customer. Um, and that's how you know if you're building a great solution or not. And again, the best thing to do uh, is to take action on the feedback. I know a lot of us sometimes uh, just shy away from feedback, but it's key. It's key to the role that you get constant feedback from your customer. Like I said, you have to listen to them, understand what they need, um, and you know, ask for feedback as you go through your project. Fantastic. I know I see another question. Uh, Amanda asked, you know, what is, uh, in what ways does this differ from a customer success position? Is this more of just gathering information? Um, so I'll talk about the customer success position versus, and then Enrique, if you don't mind talking more about your role. So customer success is completely different in that you, you do a lot of different activities to manage uh, uh, the expectations of that client where Enrique will probably go further in it's a specific project that they need or they're thinking of deploying or, or adapting the technology, the business analyst will be part uh, or the solution architect will be part of a team design. Okay, I'm ready to do X. Is that a fair statement? I think maybe you can correct so that, me. That's correct. We're, we're part of a, of a delivery team, um, project delivery team. So we normally get a statement of work saying this needs to be implemented. Um, and all of the systems are listed for you. Uh, the activities that need to be performed, not at a very detailed level. It's a, a lot of times as a, you know, we need to be able to have a chat bot on uh, X, Y, and Z website. So we get that and that's where we start off our, 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 uh, our discover phase, right? Our, yes. our workshops, plan and, plan and architect. That's, again, that's my bread and butter and that's where, <laughs> I like working as a, as a solution architect. Yeah, and if I may add for that question, Amanda, think of, uh, you know, um, some of our clients may not have all the technical expertise that they're, uh, and I'm speaking only from Salesforce, might not have all the technical expertise in their team to get this accomplished. So as a service we provide, we can bring in a team that will include Enrique to, to do the full project and deployment not just the design architecture, it's the actual employment. So they do hands-on every, th that team, and it's not, Enrique would be one key point of that whole team that does the, the delivery, as we call it. Uh, another question, Rick uh, Hall asked, you know, how likely is it to find a remote position uh, for a BA? So somebody who's brand new. So Enrique, I'll let you, Tackle uh, that one uh, if you have. I did not mention I'm also a people manager within Salesforce. So oh. uh, I've done a, a couple of few hires in the past year that I've been a people manager. Um, yes, uh, we do offer remote positions. Um, uh, and uh, yes, we do travel to customer sites. Um, right now during COVID, uh, of course, it's it's still a little bit locked down because of Omicron. And, but we do, we do travel. Um, and again, it's all based on the project, right? Again, we're a project delivery team. So it's all dependent on whether the customer wants us to go uh, on site as they pay for the travel. So uh, we do travel. I, 
there there are positions uh, where you may end up traveling quite a bit, uh, but for most of our positions, I think we quote like 50% travel. Um, I haven't had the opportunity to go abroad, uh, but those op that opportunity was there uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, we've increased teams in, in different parts of the world, but um, I know like, for example, my first uh, travel was to Mexico for a big telecom company over there. It's only at Salesforce for like three months. I went over there to translate uh, in Spanish for for our sales folks uh, at Salesforce. So it was a, it was a great uh, trip. So yes, we do travel and we are remote. Well, there's a question Elio, about the search that I have. Uh, yeah. I have administrator, advanced administrator, service cloud, sales cloud, and platform app builder. So as a senior solution architect, I need to have those five. Uh, there are different roles uh, within Salesforce where you will you are required to have those five certs. Um, again, we have to practice what we preach. So um, recommend if you are going into the solution uh, consulting world or solution architect world uh, to try to get all five of those. Again, that's uh, administrator, advanced administrator, service cloud, sales cloud, and platform app builder. At a minimum, um, you know, depending on, on the position, if you apply for professional uh, services within Salesforce, which is my area, um, you know, we will at some point require you to have all five. Is it required to have all five? No, not really, but it, you know, there's a, there's a lot of candidates out there, right? And we try, you know, again, we have to look at who are the best candidates, right? And that always looks good is to have all five certs. Now, there's a question I always get asked, how do I go about getting these? Um, and it's all about networking, right? You gotta find out who, uh, you know, if you know someone, ask them, you know? I, for one, I I had help here within Salesforce. We had these internal groups that I can reach out to. Um, to be honest with you, back eight years ago when I did these, I did a lot of Googling. <laughs> I used Quizlet, I used everything in the book. Like, uh, yeah, let me just add to that. Eight years ago, we didn't have Trailhead. <laughs> right. And Vicky and I went through a, a time where we were required to get certs that were very challenging. You did a lot of homework, like you mentioned, a lot of Googling. Now we have Trailhead. Now you have a way to spin up, you know, we call them playground orgs and Trailheads, where you can actually have scenarios. And also to add the for that question people wanted to know, the sales cloud consultant and the service cloud consultant um there really there's a lot of that exam that focuses not on technology but on actual engagement so almost as if you were a ba or a solutions architect you really have to understand that environment meaning that business environment in the call center it's all about service uh, operational effectiveness right you have a lot of you have a limited amount of resources that have to answer questions from your clients right so so in the service world we call it kpi key uh, performance indicators so so service world is very focused on kpis because traditionally that part of the business is not generating revenue right so think about it when you buy a, a computer and you call in for support uh usually your computer a brand new computer comes with with that service included so that so the company's not making money on servicing that computer that you have a question on, right? So to manage that business, every minute, every time you're on the requirement that's coming in, so everything is measured, right? So the exams, in my view, the sales and, and cloud consult, the, the sales and service consultant exams are wonderful that they give you that insight. They give you that idea of not just the technology, but how to apply it in a sales environment and in a service environment. So I wanted to just make sure that I add that in there um, because it's very relevant, right? It's not like an admin exam where it's doing profiles and you know sharing rules. The, the, the sales and service will really give you um, a, a more understanding of being in that role. Um, so I'm glad you you mentioned Enrique that you know that's that's critical to have those exams to be successful in that role. As we're asking these questions, and I'll jump into more questions. I am posting also links 
front that David uh, would like me to share with the group about his uh, YouTube channel. He does record these sessions. We do post them there. There's also some study techniques. So please, uh, Megan's got an awesome set of links. I just posted them all for flows, for networking, for studying techniques. So uh, hopefully you, you'll get access to all those on the chat screen. So let me jump into the next question. If I made, uh, I think Ben has one. What does your typical project team look like for you? Uh, what is the number ratio of technical architects, solution architects, enterprise architects, and BAs on a project team? It can vary, uh, but I'll hand Enrique. Uh, yeah, mind. that's a that's a great question. <laughs> Depends how big the 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 project and how long the project is. Right now, uh, I'm, I'm with my customer, we're working with Revenue Cloud teams, uh, project delivery teams from Salesforce. Uh, MuleSoft teams. So each one has like their own technical architect. I'm working on uh, the Salesforce platform side, sales and service. We're also implementing Salesforce scheduler. Uh, it's, it's a pretty big project. My makeup right now is two technical architects, uh, senior business analyst, which is me, myself. And I think another question here that that's out there, what's the demand for business analysts? The demand is there. <laughs> We're looking for business analysts. Um, in, in our project, I have one business analyst uh, that, uh, you know, we go through a partner uh, because we don't have uh, that many, right? It, it depend, again, it depends also what the availability is, right? Uh, we have so many projects um, within Salesforce and the demand is there. That's all I can say, right? So uh, I'm down to one business analyst that, uh, works with me again. I gather the requirements. I pass on all the work to that person. Where and what I mean by work is, they actually um, do the functional um, setup of Salesforce uh, with my guidance, and I also get my hands dirty and I build out Salesforce. The makeup of the team after the two TAs, one SBA, uh, one BA. I have one developer. Um, we carried at 1.3 developers because this was an this was moving from one Salesforce org to another. So, um, and combining two orgs where we're combining sales and service and adding revenue cloud and MuleSoft integrations all in one. So it's, it's, a, it's pretty a, a massive project. So, and I'll probably be out in until July. So maybe I could take a three week vacation after that. <laughs> um, Cause it's nonstop work, but that, the, and we have one PM uh, project manager. So the project manager is our scrum master. They're the ones that are like the traffic cops, making sure that uh, the customer's not asking us for requirements that are way out there, out of our scope of our of our contract. In other words, our statement of work. Um, and we have uh, an engagement manager, someone who maintains the relationship of uh, with Salesforce and the customer that's only focusing on the project delivery side. Awesome. So that's our makeup. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. And I know... Uh... Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, the BA, uh, it's like a, you know, it could be your entry point into a, a, a completely different world because you have in some of these teams, you're going to be exposed to a lot more season and e expertise at different levels, right? Architects from different areas, uh, scrum masters, project managers. I mean, you could see how you can, a BA not only could be, you can grow that career vertical, or you can be exposed also to other roles that you might be interested. And I know there was a question about, um, you know, what's the average salary? Um, we actually, if you go to if you go to Trailhead and you select the different roles for BA, there is a write up. There's actually, I think, a starting and there's a range of uh, salaries that you can do. I don't, I don't want to. I'm going to give you homework to go to Trailhead and, and try to get that answer from there because we have posted it there. There's different jobs. And you can see the different range of prices in Trailhead. Uh, and Timothy, I love your comment about Omicron. And I always think about the Transformers. He took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I always think, are they talking about Megatron? Or no? Sorry, that's a that's a kid's toy. Anyways, let's let's continue. Um, so Pearl says, I understand it depends on the company. However, I like the the difference between BA and associated consultant. So yes, there are. 
So there are teams that are formalized. You might be a BA that's not even a title of BA. I was not title BA. I did some projects in the field when I was a contractor. My title was project manager, but I was doing the role of a BA as part of that project manager. Uh, to, just because I already knew the, the, the platform and I was focusing more on getting, as my career was growing, I was learning more about the different roles that Enrique mentioned. And so you become very valuable if you know a little bit of those different roles that he mentioned in that team. Imagine the kind of value that you bring to that organization and yourself, how you can sell yourself. You have more marketable skills. Um, I think I see one more question about what are the challenges you face initially as a BA, Enrique? What were my initial challenges? I thought I needed to be an expert in all of the system. Ah. And that would cloud me uh, a lot, you know, and until I understood, uh, see where I came from, I was the expert. I knew that product inside out. I could talk to you about it in my sleep or after uh, a fifth of, uh, you know, bourbon or something. I could tell you everything. I wouldn't skip a beat. Uh, but coming into Salesforce, again, with everything that, um, you know, with Salesforce bringing in new features, you can't be an expert in everything. It's okay to tell the customer, hey, uh, I don't know the answer. Let me get back to you on that and then do your research. I, I For me, that's where I struggled the most um, initially. I was like, okay, uh, Salesforce is like huge. I'm not, you know, I don't know everything. I can't. And until I ended up convincing myself, I don't know everything. And I'm not expected to. I think that was the challenge that I faced the most as a business analyst. Because you go in with a customer and uh, the customer knows you're, you're coming from Salesforce. Um, you know, even though you're professional, uh, you know, there's other partners out in the ecosystem um, that also implement Salesforce, right? Like PoldSource is one of them, Emilio. Mm -hmm, um, our next guest, yep. right? They're also implementation providers for Salesforce. But customers look at us like, you know, we're just because I work for professional delivery under the Salesforce company, I come in that I have to know every single, you know, part of the system. And I'll, I'll be honest with all of you, uh, I do not. And it's okay for me to say that because, again, you shouldn't go in feeling that way, um, thinking you know everything. The more you, you learn, the, the better you can market yourself, like you just said. It's great. But I wouldn't expect any of you to know all of Salesforce, even after two, three years being on there. Right. I mean, uh, Enrique, the way Enrique and I met in a project, uh, right, he's brought in as part of this project to do this delivery that's this massive client has multiple projects. They wanted Enrique to do some of the work that is most uh, mostly associated with my role. <laughs> so we kind of let the client know, no, we need the Enrique and the architects to do this other work. And we're going to bring this other resource. And I, I came into the, to the deal, which was great, right? That's how I got to meet Enrique. And, and you don't have to know everything, right? I don't know those, the delivery protocols within Salesforce about those projects. My role is completely different, but we, we know of each other and we complement each other in that regard. I think uh, Philip had an awesome uh, question. I'm gonna jump right in there. I know we're getting close to the top of the hour, but I, I thought this was really good. So uh, Philip uh, Ortiz says, I'm fairly new to Salesforce uh, and they're looking to take their cert in a, a few weeks and their goal is to become a business analyst. And so their question is, uh, do you feel that Salesforce still a strong uh, has a strong demand today for professionals with call center industry knowledge? Before Enrique answers, I'll tell you, yes, <laughs> we can't find enough, right? Because our clients at Salesforce, you know, we have a ton of clients. Um, my specialty is service cloud. So I'm sorry, Enrique, I'm jumping in here. Um, and we always have a demand for knowledgeable people of contact centers. So, yeah, that industry, it, 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 I don't know if you follow any of the financials of Salesforce, but uh, Service Cloud, which is part of, it's, it's the cloud that's used the most in contact centers. 
Um, it, it's one of our most profitable areas of our platform, you know, and I'm proud to say, you know, I help our clients optimize the use of service cloud. So Enrique, do you mind sharing your thoughts about that question? So the question is, sorry, <laughs> you yeah. know, he, he thinks the Salesforce still ha has have currently have a strong demand today for professionals with call center industry knowledge. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's always it's always needed, right? And the more you're an expert on that, I mean, you, you don't even have to just try to be a business analyst with a professional delivery at Salesforce. I know other implementation partners are always looking for that expertise. So it's not only, you know, Salesforce that's looking for them, it's other, other companies. So there is still a demand, it's still growing. Um, it's, there's a demand for every industry, for uh, every cloud. So again, you know, uh, if, if you're good at something, become an expert at it, right? So contact center is one of them, then become an expert in service cloud. Like the sales cloud, you know, the side of it, become an expert on that, right? But again, for my, uh, for my experience, um i went in with contact center but they they just needed the help so i ended up learning not only you know again the the platform and service cloud because of my contact center expertise experience i i had to learn the sales side uh sales cloud side um as well so yes very much in the main so. awesome another question from jillian she wants to know if it's usually brought in for a certain level of client, meaning ACV, or is it more based on need and lack of partners that can do the delivery? Like when are it's, you, when is your role pulled in? So all of our projects within professional uh, services here at Salesforce, we require a BA to be staffed on the projects that come under our umbrella, right? So um not exactly it doesn't matter what the dollar amount is uh, of the the project of the contract the statement of work that was bought we need uh, a business analyst on almost every project there are projects there that are sold just for a technical architect to assist but when you're talking about complex projects um and again those those are going to be very high right in terms of uh you know the amount uh, it could be millions, right? Um, and not like $5,000 project, right? So in, in that regard, um, I couldn't be put, again, I'm on availability if they need a, a business analyst on a $500,000 project, I will be staffed on it. If it's, a, if, if it's a $10 million project, then I'll be staffed at it. I mean, we look at skills too, look at what you've done in the past, there's a lot of things that go on with our project uh, assignment team, our operations team, who, who assigns us to projects. Um, but from the the just the the simple answer is uh, no. There's no like specific ACV or certain level of ACV. Depends um, on the resources that are needed. And Dika, thank you for your awesome, insightful perspective on your role. Um, everybody, we will have a link to the recording. Uh, if you want to ask him or if you want to ask us a question and we're not, didn't have the time, uh, reach via LinkedIn. You can reach me, uh, ECAMA. I'm really easily to find. Uh, with that said, thank you again for attending. And I look forward to next week. Uh, will be another great session. I, again, David has amassed this awesome list of guests and I, David will be back next week, but I will attend because I want to learn from the co-host that's coming next week as well as I learned from Enrique. Thank you everybody. Have a wonderful night.